My pleasure to present our data regarding uh, the knowledge and practice style of pediatricia regarding childhood constipation. We would thank to all pediatric providers and we would like to thank all co-author pediatric gastroenterologists involving in our studies. And there is no conflict of interest and this research was supported and granted by National Guard. Well, the constipation is a very common disorder in childhood worldwide is account for three visit to general pediatric visit and 30% to the gastroenterologist. According to Rome, three criteria of diagnostic childhood constipation, you, are, you have at least two of six following, but unfortunately none of them is implemented in clinical practice. However, we have NASPIGAN guidelines, North America Pediatric Gastroenterology and Nutrition, and NICE Na National Institute for Health and Clinical Excellence. They develop clinical practice guidelines. There are few studies regarding the knowledge and practice styles of healthcare provider regarding approach to childhood constipation. And to the best of our knowledge, there is no study, or this is the first studies in Asia and Middle East evaluating knowledge and practice styles regarding childhood constipation. So our objective to evaluate the KBS and to compare this approach in five regions of Saudi Arabia and to give insight regarding adherence to current guidelines. The participant consisting of pediatric provider, any pediatrician or any GP or physician involved in pediatric and we define the pediatrician who is pediatric specialist and pediatric consultant, while physician who is general practitioner and family physician. This, this cross-sectional national survey was conducted in five regions of Saudi Arabia, and if you see each region has been responsible by pediatric gastroenterologist, especially in western and central region. And the survey was conducted randomly for any physician registered to Saudi Pediatric Association or Saudi Commission or Minister of the Health. And from this, initially, we sum or random selected 850. This is our questionnaire, and it was simple, and it is, was piloted studies according to validity, and we reevaluate the questions. We, the participant will ask anonymously for the diagnosis, for the treatment, for the family concern, and others. And we used the statistical value, and the p-value is than five. In addition to that, the ethics approved the studies. Our data show that 80, from 850 80, questionnaires, 622 were collected and analyzed with good, very good response rate, 73%. The reason of that, because it was face-to-face -face interview, and 16 was missed. Most of the questionnaire it is are pediatric specialist, while pediatric consultant 23 percent. However, we have internal medicine, surgeon, and general practitioner, which account for 15 to 70 percent. The distribution of those participants, we found that most of them are central region and western region, and this is expected because of the geographic distribution among the participants. Our data show that more than 50% are aging between 30 to 50 years old, and more than 50% are working in tertiary care centers. However, we found a difference regarding the definition of constipation, regarding the stall holding, and regarding anal fissures. We saw that 
the participants in Western region are able to define the constipation correctly, while in Central region they are able to make sure the stall hold as a cause of constipation. And we didn't see any significance between this definition between GP and pediatrician, as well as governmental physician and private physician, we didn't see any difference between these definitions. Regarding the diagnosis and the management of constipation, we saw that almost 39 of participants doing rectal examination was a mandatory in chronic constipation. However, most of them they did it in Western region with significant p-value, but there is no difference significantly between physician and pediatrician. Regarding the order abdominal X-ray, we found that 34 of them they do abdominal X-ray, but there is no significant between all participants. However, we found that our study that this impaction treatment, our clean out before maintenance treatment was significant between pediatrician and physician. So most of the physician or family, they are underwear about this kind of management. Regarding management of refractory constipation, what should you do? Most of the people or most of the participants, they refer to the GI, especially in Western region, while in Central region, they maximize the dose or changing the laxative. So different strategy management. Regarding the common medication use, our data shows that the most common laxative use is lactulose, which is more significant between pediatrician and physician. However, the physician use glycerin suppositories more than pediatrician and other medication were used infrequently with significant p-value. Regarding the source of constipation related information, we found that most of this information they get it from the internet and journal with significant value from those on central and western region, while in northern and southern they have less resources availability to get this information. Our conclusion, this survey provided valuable insight into the knowledge and practice styles about the chronic constipation and its management by pediatric provider working in Saudi Arabia. We found, or our study, or our data showed that there is a significant difference in knowledge gap and practice pattern among the pediatric provider from different region regarding the definition of the constipation, we found significant gap regarding the performance of rectal examination, and we found that different laxative treatment and management of childhood constipation. So this identification of gap and knowledge of practice are very useful to inform the policy maker to propose further recommendation for developing education materials for physician and pediatrician to encourage the proper diagnosis and treatment of chronic constipation. Thank you very much.